Hello, 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 a blessed day, grade 11. I'm here again to continue on guiding you for the third quarter. This time, we will study a topic about reading and writing skills. Aren't you now ready to learn? Of course, first, I want you to sit properly on your most comfortable and safest study space at home and listen very carefully. If in case there will be some gray areas along the discussion, you can go back onto this video. Okay, let's have this short prayer first before we begin. Let's all say, Father God, come, be with us today. Fill our hearts with joy. Fill our minds with learning. Fill our classroom or study spaces with peace. Fill our lessons with fun. Fill our friendships with kindness. And fill our school with love. Amen. Let's start now with this simple activity, the puzzle and the code breaker contextual activity. By the context of logic for puzzle and context of formula for codes. In here, you are given 10 seconds to break the puzzle or the code. The 10 seconds will start automatically every slide. Reminder, sit tight, stay safe, follow personal hygiene protocols while doing the activity. Let's proceed to the next slide for examples as your basis. This is the example for the puzzle breaker. In here, we see two words. Two words, the mind and the matter. And to break the puzzle, the answer would be a phrase or a group of words. And for this example, so mind over matter is the answer. Let's have the example for the code breaker part. Okay, so this is the example for the code breaker part. We see numbers 18, 5, 1, and 4. To break the code, the alpha number coding formula is given above, where the letters of the alphabet from A to Z is equivalent to the numbers like A is 1, B is to 2, C is to 3, and so on. So the answer for the code 18, 5, 1, and 4 is the word read. Hence, prepare your alpha number coding formula for this activity. Now I think you're ready. Remember, the 10 seconds will start automatically every slide while showing the puzzle or code to break. Sit properly on your study space, stay safe, and have fun, and focus. Now, let's start. This is number one. Your 10 seconds will automatically start. Okay, and the answer is reading between the lines. I hope you got the correct answer. Let's proceed to the next slide. Okay, let's see if you got the correct answer. The answer is all over again. Okay, next slide. Okay, let's see. The answer is painless operation. Okay, if you answered painless operation, you are correct. Next slide. Okay, if your answer is one in a million, that is right.
Okay, if your answer is for once in my life, that is absolutely the right answer. Next. Okay, in this puzzle, the correct answer is cross section. Hopefully, that is also your answer. Okay, think very carefully. Think deep. Okay, and for this, if your answer is excuse me, you are correct. Next. Let's have the code breaker part. Okay, if your answer is intertext, that is correct and in context. Next. Okay. Now, code very carefully. Okay, so if you answer retail, you are correct. Next. Okay. Be careful in your coding. Okay, let's see if what is the answer. The answer is allusion. Okay. There are a lot of letters. And the answer here is acknowledge. Okay. And one, and the answer is quotation. That is the answer. Next. Come on, make it fast. Okay. And the answer is hypertext. Next slide. Okay. Okay. Be fast in your coding. Okay, let's see. For this one, the correct answer is browsing. Okay, browsing. Let's have the last one. Two and one zero. Okay, and what do you think is the answer for decoding for the last coding part? If you answered, let's see. Searching, you are definitely correct. I hope, guys, you enjoyed our warming activity because they have a connection with our topic today. And I hope you get the correct answers for all the puzzle and code breakers, breaker activity part and learn something logical and code breaking or code ciphering today in this activity. Our topic for this lesson is context of text development. And there are two techniques of context of text development, the hypertext and the intertext. These are the two techniques uh, in making a context of text development in associating or connecting text to other texts that is hypertext and intertext and our learning competency for this lesson is to identify the context in which a text was developed and of course that is through hypertext and intertext with the given code
After this lesson, you are expected to understand the concept and key techniques and elements of hypertext and intertext. B. Identify hypertext and intertext as methods of text development. And lastly, to apply, develop, and present an intertextual and or hypertextual output. Okay, so those are the three unpack objectives. So, context of text development through hypertext and intertext. In this era of technology, readers are very much open to use either the print or the non-print medium for reading, like browsing the net or searching different websites over the internet. Today, we will study how to access information manually or hypertextually. Let's start the lesson by defining what's a context. Being a critical reader also involves understanding that texts are always developed with a certain context. A text is neither read nor written in a vacuum. Its meaning and interpretation are affected by a given set of circumstances such as the life of the author, the society, the culture, history, politics, and even the psychological environment. Thus, context is defined as the social, cultural, historical, political, and other related circumstances that surround the text and from the terms from which it can be better understood and evaluated. In discovering a text's context, you may ask questions like, when was the work written, what were the circumstances that produced it, and what issues deal with it. So there's a question here. What will happen if you click the link in the box? Okay, upon clicking it, we will jump to the resource, particularly the website shown onto the next slide. So let's see the resource. Website of the link, Malalinta National High School, that gymdosite.com. Okay, if you wanted to click the word go back so this is the word go back what will happen then let's see okay so we went back on to this uh, question uh, about the resource website of malalita national high school now let's click the resource again so this link when clicking the link we will proceed to the page of malalinta national high school what if we're going to click this icon, the Netflix icon? Okay, so we jump to this resource website for the most popular Netflix movie series in the first quarter of 2022, The All of Us Are Dead, where trapped students must escape their high school, which has become ground zero for a zombie virus outbreak. Okay, so let's go back to the MNHS website by clicking this school logo. Upon clicking the school logo, we go back to the website. And of course, there is a red arrow here. Let's try to click this red arrow. By clicking the red arrow, we'll proceed to under context of text development, hypertext is the first technique. Hypertext is a loose website or loose web of free association of general links that is according to Michael Repatere in 2010. It is usually by creating links between information. So the reader may jump to further information about a specific topic he wanted to learn over the internet. Hyper means beyond or extreme. Hypertext characterized the external links embedded in a text by a writer. Informations are connected semantically from one text to another. And hypertext is a nonlinear way to present information and is usually accomplished using a link. So what is a link? Let's use hypertext technique or the linking by clicking the word link and we will see if it will connect us to its definition. So links. Links are gateways to connect or associate information not limited to text or documents. It may also incorporate other forms of multimedia like shapes, pictures, sounds, and videos. 
and they are called hypermedia. Don't you know that hypermedia is one of the lessons in grade 12 subject, multimedia and information literacy, or the MIL. In hypertext, readers become co-authors of the material by creating links or connections, another meaning for themselves. Independent and critical thinking is then created by just using these links or the hypertext. Okay, so traditional text or we call the linear text. Traditional text, according to this image, are linear or the normal text connection, also called intertext or the specific text in other materials. While hypertext is nonlinear as shown in this image, it is an association or connection of text from other links, usually online because we can personalize and create hypertext offline if we wanted to uh, by using links or hyperlinks. So what is hypertext again? Okay, so hypertext is a loose association of texts using links. Hypertext has three main pedagogical benefits. The first one, it promotes a dialogue. It can be constructed as a collaborative medium. And the last one, it can be used in any computer-aided facilitated instruction, meaning hypertext is really helpful for writers and students like us. Let's take this additional information from this visual podcast. We offer underlined terms such as symbolic shadow, emancipation proclamation, withering injustice, and joyous day break, or hyperlinks. Clicking one of those words would lead you to a different page which develops and explains the context of the hypertext. Excerpt from Martin Luther King Jr., I Have a Dream Speech. A reader can then skim through the sections of a text freely, jumping from one part to another. Thus, in reading with hypertext, you are given more flexibility and personalization because you get to select the order in which you read the text and focus on information that is relevant to your background and interests. Okay, let's have an example in history. The link is about the end of Gothenburg, which actually jumps to the resource of this image. The image is a comic conversation about Nostradamus. And as I read, it says here, Say Nostradamus, come and take a look at my new Bible. And Nostradamus answered, Forget about books, pal. The future is hypertext. Okay, so hypertext is the future. Hypertext allows the readers to create their own meaning out of the material given and learn better associatively. And hypertext has two key elements. Through browsing, one retrieves information by association, by backtracks or links. And you maintain history or bookmarks. We are doing this online. We are maintaining bookmarks. And automatically, the history is already saved. And be searching when one retrieves data by content. In here, you are constructing indexes of URLs. And you search by keyword, description of a page, by name, or by label. So when you browse, you are actually surfing the internet. And when you search, you actually examine and probe the idea or a text from the internet to other resources or websites. URLs. URLs or Uniform Resource Locators. These are the internet address. Resource is something that can be accessed like file media, blog, or website, etc. And this is a URL syntax. So this is the URL syntax. The example here is the protocol colon double slash domain name or host name slash the path or the path name. Okay, so sample from this structure. The structure of the resource is example, the, the hypertext. Markup protocol, colon, double slash, 
hypersosanelson.yolasite.com. So this is an example of a URL syntax. The way in which data can be accessed is constrained by the protocol used. URL was also a topic uh, in your previous semester's subject, which is the empowerment technology and computer 101 in college. Okay. Again, let's click the URL syntax in the box. Upon clicking this URL syntax or link, okay, so this is the page. This is now the complete resource structure or the URL syntax a while back. Under this, see my study last 2019, published last 2019 here in SSRN website entitled Problems Encountered in Doing Research by the Grade 12 Students of Schools in San Manuel District, San Manuel, Isabella, School Year 2018-2020. 19. Okay, so let's now click the hypertext entitled next, the next topic here. Upon clicking this one, we will move to intertextuality, the second technique. Intertextuality is the second technique of the context of text development, or simply intertext. Intertext is actually building a structured network, a specific connection to keep the reader on track or on the same ideological zone towards the correct interpretation of the material based on Michael Rifatere 2010. It is the text's relation with other texts. It creates an interrelationship between texts and generates related understanding in separate works. Inter between or among. According to Gadavanage, intertextuality is a literary device or literary discourse strategy. Examples are the borrowing and the transformation of a prior text. Another example is the citing or referencing to other texts for your research chapter 2 or the review of related literature or the RRL. Doing RRL is actually one of the best examples of intertextuality. While to empty Chong Son, intertextuality is the modeling of a text's meaning by another text. It is seen when an author or writer borrows or transforms a prior text or when you read one text and you refer it to another text without quotation marks. And according to the study of Kristeva, who is a French author, a critic, an educator, and semiotician, intertextuality is a mosaic or an assortment, a mixture or combination of different ingredients of quotations that adapts and changes a text through adding or eliminating some part of it. Thus, intertextuality becomes a dialogue among different texts and versions or interpretations of the writer and the reader. Intertextual reading is the perception of similar comparabilities from text to text. Intertext refers to a work whose meaning is shaped by referencing or calling to mind other texts. And there are four techniques of intertextuality. The retell, when one writer render information verbally, the second one is the allusion. It is passing reference or indirect mention of one thing. The third one is quotation. It is a passage or expression that is quoted. And lastly is acknowledge. Acknowledge is to cite or refer one text to give credit. Those are the four intertextuality techniques. One example in literature, it is the retelling of the local legend of folk hero Bernardo Carpio. Many versions of this tale exist, but local folklore says he is a giant who is the cause of earthquakes. In Greek mythology, there is also Poseidon who is the god of the sea and also the, the god of the earthquakes. This example compared Carpio, a legend from the Philippine literature, 
to Poseidon of Greek mythology is actually an intertextuality of each other. Another example in science, the tall story by Candy Gourlay. This is a story of a British Filipina teenager who meets Bernardo, her long-lost half-brother who turns out to be 8 feet tall and suffers from gigantism. However, the people believe that he is the legendary giant who has come to save everyone from earthquakes. This example is also an intertext of Bernardo Carpio, the folk hero who is also compared to the legendary giant and Poseidon a while back. Another example is Victor Magtanggol who is compared to the Marvel superhero Thor. They are intertext of each other. This is Victor Magtanggol and this is Thor. Mom, can we get Thor? Mom says, we got Thor at home. And Thor at home is actually Victor Magtanggol. Let's take this additional information from this visual podcast. Take a look at this sample intertext. Obviously, you could see some similarities of this old painting to the Simpsons photo. The second picture is considered an intertext of the first because of the similarities in the character's gesture and abstract theme. Intertextuality is widely used in different media. For example, before we had movies with vampire themes such as the Twilight Saga Eclipse, we already had the classic movie Dracula. And we all know that before the movie Ivan Almighty was produced, we already have the biblical story of Noah's Ark. And before we had the art parody Mona Bean, we already have Mona Lisa. Another example of intertext is Sa Vogue, the lampoon or satire version of the magazine Vogue. Almost dead. Kyle, cast arcane missiles. I'm out of mana. I told you. I've got to heal. Crew, we have a new member of the team. We meet again, Captain Daly. We're trapped. So that's intertextuality. If you're watching a text and it reminds you of something else, or it references something that you recognize, it's probably intertextuality. Intertext is also found in common speech. For example. You are a Solomon when it comes to making ideas or decisions. The name Solomon is an allusion to King Solomon of the Bible who is known for his wisdom. Number two, I'm sure that you're the culprit. I could almost see your nose growing. The underlined phrase alludes to literary character Pinocchio, who is known for his growing nose when lying. And third one, Lois is good in English, science, Social studies, but math is really her Waterloo. Waterloo means weakness as an illusion to the Battle of Waterloo, where Napoleon Bonaparte was finally defeated. Okay, so that is intertextuality. There are also other ways to linearly or manually connect to other texts or intertext between or among texts. We have dictionary to dictionary, book to book, book to dictionary, dictionary to book, book to magazine, magazine to dictionary, book to film, newspaper to a book, magazine to a magazine, newspaper to dictionary, newspaper to newspaper, newspaper to research or encyclopedia or others. So these are different ways to manually connect to other texts or to intertext. Now, let's have this enrichment activity, the analyze and identify the context. The directions here are to read each statement and analyze very carefully whether the technique used here or in the context is hypertext or intertext. You have 10 seconds to analyze the given statement per slide and give your answer. Just a reminder, everyone. I want you all to participate in this individual activity. Please sit tight and be safe in your study space while answering this activity. So this is activity number one. Intertext or hypertext. One compares the meaning of the word volcanic lighting and ash fall 
from dictionary to the encyclopedia? So the answer is intertext. The answer is intertext from dictionary to encyclopedia, RRL, on the given links from online library website. Okay, write your answer now. Okay, the answer is hypertext. Next. Number three, Lina serves the net to check some information from the links of music and dance craze of Sarah Geronimo entitled Tala. Okay, and the answer is hypertext. Glenn researches for some scientific journals and reads history books on the library for her assignment about DNA. The answer is intertext. Number five, Nino wanted to check the blog of his classmates about business theories from the link given by his teacher. Okay. And the answer is hypertext. Number six. Rico compares by synthesis the five theses for his practical research one. And the answer is intertext. Number seven. Minda looks through the links from the net for some files about the history of Homo sapiens. And the answer is hypertext. Okay, 10 seconds is started. Jim cited an information from the book of Confucius for his school report about virtues. Okay, so let's see the answer. The answer is intertext. Ezra probes some related websites links to visualize some pictures and sounds of a ukulele. So this is a ukulele. Okay. And the answer for number nine is hypertext. Number 10. Number 10. Jack applied some of the strategies he read from the Algebra magazine into his personal article. And the answer for number 10 is intertext. Number 11. For number 11, Anna logged in to his Yahoo Mail and Gmail to check some message or message links from the Philippine Military Academy. And the answer is hypertext. And lastly, number 12, Mr. Cruz gives credit to the authors of the journals and books he referred with for his cultural essay about Taifugaos in Alfonso Lista. And the answer is intertext. I am pretty sure that you already know the difference of the two techniques of context of text development, the hypertext and the intertext. So let's proceed to recitation time. As critical writers in our compositions like essays, technical papers, or researches, why the use of intertextuality or, or hypertextuality significant? Any idea? Yes, I know that your ideas have points. As critical writers, the use of these two techniques of context of text development the hypertext and the intertextuality is very important because these are the two certain ways to access information, whether manual or traditional, and nonlinear or through hyperlinks. Another for us to join the universal academic conversation of writing. Now, I want you to complete the statements. Number one, our lesson was about Okay, of course, it is about context of text development with its two techniques, 
the hypertext, and the intertext. And for number two, intertextuality is using borrowing, combining, and transforming a text manually, while hypertextuality is the accessing information in general context that goes beyond the meaning of a text uh, across or beyond by the use of hyperlinks over the internet usually. And number three, I learned that, of course, yes, we learned today about the significance of the two techniques of the context of text development, which are the hypertext and the intertext, where they are used to complement an idea or text from one text to another in traditional or hyperlinks texts. Now, let's have this individual assessment of yours. Again, I want you to be in your safest study space for this activity. Directions, read and understand the items carefully. Write jam if the statement is correct and jazz if false. You have 100 seconds per, for 5 questions per slide. So read and understand the items carefully before answering. You may write your answer on a piece of paper or on your answer sheet. Okay, so this is the first 100 seconds for the first slide. Jam or jazz activity. Number one is, intertextuality is the complete opposite of hypertextuality. Second one, hypertext promotes dialogue. Third, intertextuality is a loose web of free association. Number four, browsing is the retrieval of information by content. And number five, intertext becomes a dialogue of different texts. Okay. Now 100 seconds is still running. Okay, continue answering 1 to 5. And let's proceed to the next slide. So, next slide. Jam or jazz activity. You may just write jam or jazz. Jam if true or jazz if false. 6 is Julian Cristeva said that intertextuality is a mosaic of quotation. Number seven, intertextual reading is the perception of similar comparabilities from text to text. Eight, intertextuality is the versions or interpretations of the writer and the reader. Number nine, hypertextuality builds a structured network that will keep the reader on track. And for number 10, searching is the retrieval of the information in association. Okay. So read very carefully and understand every item before writing your answer on your answer sheet. Okay, your 100 seconds are still running. Okay. And for the answer key, here are the answers. One is true or jam. Two is true or jam. 
3 is false or jazz, 4 false, 5 true, and so on. Congratulations class! We're done with our week 7 and 8 lesson, the context of text development with its two techniques, the hypertext and the intertext, under reading and writing skills subject. Now let's proceed to your final task, which is an assignment of yours, a group task. Or assignment, group performance task. Alright, for this learning competency, you have this final group performance task. Uh, for this lesson, as your assignment, of course, you are pre-grouped according to your address, talent, and general interest. The rubrics are given on the next slides as your basis for your output. Let's have them one by one. For group one, you have to craft a poem with a minimum of five stanzas, explaining the two techniques of the context of text development, the hypertext, and the intertext with these reflected rubrics below. Okay, so this is for group one. Collaborate and cooperate properly. Next is for group 2. For you group 2, write a 100-word essay clarifying the function or significance of the two techniques of the context of text development, the hypertext and the intertext with the given rubrics for essay writing. Next. Okay, for group 3. You compose a song or chant presenting the two techniques of the context of text development, the hypertext and the intertext, and it must be video recorded with the given rubrics. Next, group four, make a poster or collage presenting the two techniques of the context of text development, following the given rubrics, of course, as your basis. And lastly, for group five. For group number five, create a PowerPoint presentation discussing the context of text development, of course, following the given rubrics as your guide. And as a reminder class, everyone, please cooperate and collaborate with each other among your group. All outputs will be submitted next week. For the write-up tasks, please send the soft copies to me, including the video task. And in all that you do, practice personal hygiene protocols at all times. Thank you for listening. Happy watching, happy learning, and Godspeed.